the next sequence of videos, we're going to finish up section 4.1, where we're introducing the first order language of predicate logic. So in the last class, we introduced the alphabet and how, could, how to construct well-formed formula and their complexity. And we'll talk about other definitions that we need. Um, and then in 4.2, we'll talk about the axioms of predicate logic and the rules of inference of first order or predicate logic. So let's talk about the learning outcomes. So the, the ones that will be covered in this video for section 4.1 include, include being able to determine the occurrence of a variable in a formula. So in particular, the definition of occurrence that we had in Boolean logic is the same. So we simply have to identify what it means for a object variable to occur in a formula. And we will be able to identify free and bound occurrences of a variable in a formula, in particular um, an object variable in a formula. Uh, within this section we'll also be able to identify all prime subformulae of a well-formed formula and display them by boxing. This we aren't going to do in the videos but we'll cover in class. We'll also be able to use boxing to indicate the Boolean abstraction of a well-formed formula. So in this video we'll simply introduce the definition of abstraction and give some examples. And finally, you'll be able to perform substitutions of terms into variables as well as substitutions that are unconditional and conditional. The learning outcomes for section 4.2 include that you will be able to determine whether a formula is one of the logical axioms of predicate logic and write theorem calculations or for gamma theorems or gamma proofs as we called them before. Okay, so let's look at the occurrence of a variable in a formula. So just like the original definition of occurrence of a variable in a formula, it's simply identifying whether that variable is in the formula or not. So all we need to talk about now is the definition of the sco scope of a quantifier. So we're going to look at an example of a well-formed formula which has a quantifier in it to dis define what we mean when the occurrence of a variable is in the scope of a quantifier. So we simply define any x occurring in A to be in the scope of the quantifier. So this means that a variable is in the scope of a quantifier if the quantifier acts on that variable within this well-formed formula A. And to distinguish this, any x occurring in B, in which there is no quantifier next to this well-formed formula, any x's occurring in here are not in the scope of a quantifier. So let's look at an example. So if in particular we let b be the well-formed formula, or atomic formula x equal to y, and a be the atomic formula x less than y, where less than of course is a predicate, then this example becomes x equal to y implies for all x, x less than y. So can you determine which occurrences of x occur in the scope of a quantifier and which ones do not. So, in particular, we have three occurrences of x within this first order formula. Here's the first occurrence, here's the second, and here's the third. So, is the first occurrence of x in the scope of a quantifier? You are correct if you said that it is not, right? Because there is no quantifier acting on this first occurrence of x. Is the second occurrence of x in the scope of a quantifier? This is a little bit tricky because this is not within the definition, but it turns out that the second occurrence of x is not in the scope because it's not in the formula in which the quantifier acts. It's the variable that the quantifier is acting on. Finally, considering the third occurrence of x, which is here, is this one in the scope of this quantifier? And the answer is yes, because this quantifier acts on this well-formed formula in which x occurs. 
Okay, so now that we have this definition, we can identify what a bound occurrence means and what a free occurrence means. So an occurrence of a variable x in a formula is said to be bound if and only if it occurs in the substring for all x, so particularly x occurs in this for all x, or it is in the scope of some quantifier over x. And then we define a variable x to be free if and only if it is not bound. So that means it's not a variable within the quantifier and not within the well-formed formula in which the quantifier acts. Let's look at another example. So again, we'll cons consider our previous example. x equal to y implies for all x, x less than y. So let's determine, is the first occurrence of x, which is here, bound or free? So you are correct if you said free, since this occurrence of x is not a variable with a quantifier, nor is it in the scope of any quantifier. What about the second occurrence of x? Is it bound or is it free? So you're correct if you said it's bound, since it is the variable within the quantifier here. And what about the third occurrence of x? Is it bound or is it free? You are correct again if you said that it's bound, since it's in the scope of this quantifier here. All right, so that ends this section of the video, and we'll next look at subformulae and abstractions.